Hi everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to find the bearing of a point A from a point B given the bearing of point B from point A. To learn exactly how it's done, I'm going to be working through these three examples you see here. And I've chosen three examples to illustrate what happens when the initial bearing we're given is an acute angle, so between 0 and 90 degrees, and when it's an obtuse angle from 90 to 180 degrees, and finally, when the initial bearing we have is a reflex angle, so between 180 degrees and 360 degrees. So let's get started. In this first example, we need to find the bearing of point A from point B. And we can see that the bearing of B from A is 63 degrees. Remember, that's the angle measured clockwise from the northern line, and it's right here. So placing ourselves at point B, how do we find the bearing of point A? Well, the first thing to do is to draw the northern line, or the north line, like so. I point an arrow upwards, and I'll label it with a capital N for north. And now the bearing of point A from point B is this angle right here. That's the bearing. That's the angle going clockwise from north back to the line segment BA. And so what is this angle? Well, one way of finding it is to extend this line segment AB, like I'm doing here in dotted gray, and to notice that since both of these northern lines are parallel, the angle that the northern line makes with my dotted gray line and this 63 degree angle are corresponding and equal angles. So that angle at the top here is 63 degrees. And now adding to that the fact that along a line the angles add up to 180 degrees, this gray angle is 180. Consequently, the bearing we're trying to find is equal to 63 plus 180. And I'll go ahead and write that, that's 63 plus 180, which equals to 243 degrees. And that's the bearing of point A from point B. Okay, let's look at this second example with the obtuse angle. In this case, we're given the bearing of point D from point C, indeed it's 120 degrees, and we need to find the bearing of point C from point D. And so if I illustrate that, at point D I draw my north line, like so, and I label that capital N again. The bearing or angle we're trying to find is this one right here. And to find it, if I extend the segment CD with the dotted gray line again, like so, we quickly see that because these two northern lines are parallel, this yellow angle here and this 120 degrees are corresponding and equal angles. And so I can state that this yellow angle is 120 degrees. And once more, because the angle along a line adds up to 180, this gray angle has to be 180 degrees. Finally, the bearing we're trying to find is equal to 120 plus 180. And I'll go ahead and write that, that's 120 plus 180, which is equal to 300 degrees. And at this stage, let me stop for a second. What we notice with these two examples is that all we actually had to do to find the bearing to get back to our initial point was to add 180. And in fact, that will always be the case provided the initial bearing is an acute or an obtuse angle. And I'll go ahead and write that. I'll say if the bearing, so I'll just say if bearing, bearing of a point B from a point A, so from A, is equal to a generic angle A, then the bearing, so I'll just say then bearing of the point A, of A, from the point B, so I'll say from B, is two dots A plus 180 degrees. And that formula will always work provided the angle A is acute or obtuse. And this formula allows us to find the bearing we're after really quickly. Indeed, look back at our first example here. Since we knew that the bearing of point B from point A was 63 degrees, and that's an acute angle, we could have said right away that the bearing of point A from point B was 63 degrees plus 180, which is 243. Similarly, for the second example here, since we knew that the bearing of point D from point C was 120 degrees, and that that's an obtuse angle, we could use this formula right away and state that the bearing of point C from point D is just 120 plus 180, which is 300. That being said, let's look at the third and final case. 
Here, the bearing of point F from point E is 204 degrees, and 204 degrees is a reflex angle, and we need to find the bearing of point E from point F. Well, we place ourselves at point F and draw the north line, like so, and I label that capital N. And the bearing of point E from point F is this angle here. And to find it, I'll go ahead and extend the line segment EF, and I'll do so with a dotted gray line, like so. We quickly see that because these two northern lines must be parallel, the bearing we're trying to find and this yellow angle I'm adding right now are corresponding and equal angles. But so what is this yellow angle? Well, using the fact that the angle I'm drawing right now in gray must be 180 degrees, and the fact that the bearing we're given 204 is equal to 180 plus this yellow angle, we quickly realize that this yellow angle is equal to 204 degrees minus 180, and that's equal to 24 degrees. And since the bearing we're after and this yellow angle are equal, we can state that the bearing of point E from point F is equal to 0, 24. Done. Remember, we always write bearings with three digits, which is why I have this zero at the front here. Now, what this third example shows us is that when the initial bearing we're given is a reflex angle, rather than adding 180 degrees, we subtract 180 degrees. And that will always be the case when dealing with a reflex angle. And so if you like formula, we can add a second one here, especially for reflex angles. Indeed, we can go ahead and state that if the bearing of B from A is equal to A, then the bearing of A from B will be equal to A minus 180. And I'll go ahead and box that as well. That's the formula you can use when the initial bearing you're given is a reflex angle. These formula will always work and they're really useful to know when working with bearings. Indeed, let me take one more minute to show you how quickly we can find bearings this way. Here I've quickly scribbled two more examples. In the first one, we know that the bearing of B from point A is 73 degrees. And so to find the bearing of point A from point B, since 73 degrees is an acute angle, we'd use the top formula. And we could quickly state that the bearing of point A from point B is 73 plus 180, which is equal to 253. In this second example, we know that the bearing of point B from point A is 215 degrees. Since 215 degrees is a reflex angle, we use the second formula we have here, and we can state that the bearing of point A from point B, so that's this angle right here, is equal to 215 minus 180, which is equal to 35 degrees. And we'd write that answer with three digits as 0, 3, 5. And there we have it. We now know how to find the bearing of a point A from a point B, given the bearing of point B from point A. And that's it for this tutorial.